Back in October, I had the opportunity to go to the California TESOL conference, and I really enjoyed it. It was in San Jose, beautiful weather, great people. Had a chance to give a session on Friday morning on authentic listening material, and then I had the rest of the conference to just wander around and listen to others. Uh, it was really good. Um, Saturday morning, I had a chance to go to a conference session uh, from a couple of people, Grazia and Celine from the California College of Communications. They did a really good kind of parallel session to mine. Um, it was also using authentic content, but their focus was on newscasts and how they use uh, podcasts in their classroom. Really well done. The two of them did a really excellent job, and uh, I was really impressed with the way they kind of organized everything. One of the takeaways I went with, I had many, but one of the takeaways I got was they actually go and download their podcasts and then use an online tool to convert them to something just a little bit slower. They change the tempo of it, um, which keeps the pitch the same. So it sounds still sounds fairly natural, um, but it gives um, more space between the audio. And so that way students can have more chance to be able to listen to it and comprehend it. So in my class, I was thinking I typically do it um, live using VLC. So I'll load a, uh, audio into VLC and then I'll use the slowing down portion of it to be able to have it sound a little slower for my students. So I'm going to give you um, a chance to be able to hear that in a second. But first I'm going to tell you what I've done to give as an example. So I'm using a podcast from NPR called How to Succeed at College. And it's a really good kind of college um, tools type of podcast. So there's different things in here that I'll, I'll cut out of a podcast and have my students listen to. And I'll use Audacity to kind of trim it up just a little bit. And so what I've done is I've taken one of those and I've taken 12 seconds of that just to give you an example of something that's a little fast for my students, but comprehensible to higher level, but probably going to struggle for those who are a little bit lower level. So here it is. I'm going to play it through VLC first. So you've picked your classes, you found a place to live, you got the books. Now it's time to buckle down and do college. Your academics and your, your knowledge of the material only get you so far, then you have to be able to demonstrate it. So a little bit fast, like I said, but not too bad. But I would want to slow it down just a little bit for some of my students. So how would I do that? Well, first off in VLC, I would have to have it playing first. So I'm just going to start it and I'm going to move it back to zero. Then I'm going to go up to playback and I'm going to go speed. And I'm going to use, there's two different slowers, a slower fine and slower. So small jump, big jump. I prefer two small jumps for my students. So I go slower fine and then speed slower fine. So now it's slowed down just a little bit. You'll hear the difference. So you've picked your classes, you found a place to live, you got the books. Now it's time to buckle down and do college. Your academics and your, your knowledge of the material only get you so far, then you have to be able to demonstrate it. So there you go. Quality, there's a little bit of distortion, a little bit of a clicking sound to it sometimes when it's trying to catch up, doing a little catch up. Um, but overall, pretty good option for students. I'm playing it through the speakers in my classroom. But if I want to have students listen to it, um, they can do the same thing, but sometimes it's just a little easier to give them a, a file that's already slowed down. So the way I used to do that was I would use Audacity. So in Audacity, here's my file here. And the first thing you need to do is you need to select everything. So I'm going to use Control A on a, on a Windows machine or a Command A on a Mac to we'll select everything. And then I'm going to go up to Effect and I'm going to do Change Tempo. And I'm going to just put it down by minus 20. That's about 80. It gives us about 80% of the original. Okay, so I hit OK, and it's gone from just over 12 seconds to just over 15 seconds. So about three seconds longer than the original. So here it is. So you've picked your classes, you found a place to live, you got the books. Now it's time to buckle down and do college. Your academics and your, your knowledge of the material only get you so far, then you have to be able to demonstrate it. So you can tell it's not as good a quality as VLC. Uh, it's got a lot more distortion to it. But now I can save the file. But do I want to? Is there a better route? And that's where we take a look at some of the online tools. So I'm going to just pull you up to the online tools. And there's two I'm going to show you. The first one comes from audiotrimmer.com. And just click on Tempo Changer. And you come to this site. Once you have the file, you hit Browse. 
and then you find the file on your computer and you upload it. Now I've done that, now I choose what tempo I want it to be. So I'm going to choose 80% in this case, similar to what I just did. I hit change speed. It does a little bit of a processing and then it's just so fast, voila, download, ready to go very fast. So I hit the download and now I can save the file to my computer, but I'm just going to play it through Windows Media Player right now. So I'm just going to go straight to the Windows Media Player. So you've picked your classes, you found a place to live, you got the books. Now it's time to buckle down and do college. Your academics and your, your knowledge of the material only get you so far, then you have to be able to demonstrate it. Much better, right? I mean, it still sounds a little unnatural, but it's not because of the audio quality. It's just that it's a little stretched. And so this I find to be a very effective tool, very fast, very easy to use. But if you want to do a little bit more tweaking or that one's having some problems, the backup plan is to use um, this one from conversion-tool.com slash pitch. And then you'll get into, there's a lot of different conversion tools through this website, but the slash pitch will take you to this one. And then you can just, again, browse for the file. And then you go down and you change your options. So you have a few things about tempo transposing it like pitch wise. Uh, so that one, if you have a file that the pitch sounds a little low or a little high, you can actually adjust that a little bit. Uh, but I'm just going to change the tempo. Um, and I'm going to leave it at MP3 because it seems to be the easiest for my students to be able to upload onto their phones and stuff like that. Um, and I'm going to leave it at algorithm one. There's a couple different algorithms, but I'm just going to leave it at that. And I'm going to hit start conversion. Now, this one here takes a little longer. And in fact, it takes so much longer sometimes that it actually tells you that there's a website you can click on and wait for it. But this one was actually pretty quick this time. So I'm going to hit the download one. And I'm going to do the same. So you've picked your classes, you found a place to live, you got the books. Now it's time to buckle down and do college. Your academics and your, your knowledge of the material only get you so far, then you have to be able to demonstrate it. In this case, you'll notice still really decent quality. You don't have to worry about it. Um, but it is a little slower and it's also a little bit more convoluted. Not really much, but certainly not to the streamline that you can get from audiotrimmer.com. Once you have the downloaded file, of course, then you can upload it to your LMS, you can share it with your students, or you can just play it in the front of the classroom. So it's a little easier, you don't have to fiddle with anything, you just play it straight out. So hopefully that gives you some ideas about how to uh, slow down your audio a little bit for your students. And if you have any other kind of tools that you've used, either software that you've uh, download to your computer or some online tools. Share them with me. I can share them out with other people as well. Um, I would ask that if you are interested in more of these videos that you subscribe. That way you get a notification whenever I upload new videos. And also check out my website nathanhall.ca. I'm just going to be adding these to my web tools that don't require registration. I have a whole list there and there's a bunch of other things that are on there as well too. So thank you for watching the video and I will talk to you again soon.